There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Basili. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is The Psychic and The Doc, and And it starts starts now. Everybody, I want to welcome you to The Psychic and The Doc. Oh, my God. My colleague, uh, most amazing, Mark Anthony, I'm always in awe. I get off the phone. I do these shows. I get off doing these shows, and I have to walk away, and I have to take a nap because it is like so absolutely phenomenal what he does. And I I just want to make a comment for a minute because I reread his book, uh, The Afterlife uh, Frequency. I reread his book because it's just something, he and I have something in common. Uh, There's a place I'm going with this story. Trust me, there's a place I'm going. I have no doubts. (laughs) Okay. But but the reason I had had, had to do that is because there's a vibration and a frequency. And you know, I was talking uh, to an, an, on another show about it. And somebody said to me, how do you know? And I said, you know what? You just got to tune into this here show. If you're going to tune in, it's like Dan Doc. It's going four claps, sit, gone throw. So you just tune in. Because there's nothing I could say to you. And then the other thing you need to do is just go get Mark's book. or call Mark. I said, when you ask me how I know, I'm a li- okay, you know me, right? Rocky, Rocky and you guys know me. So oh, when yeah. you asked me how I know, my aunt, I looked him straight in the, in the eye in the camera and I said, you know how I know? I'm going to make up his name. Colton, you know how I know? I was born knowing. Now, what has that got to do with the psychic and the doc? It's got a lot because today's show is about knowing. It's about what we know. But we want to start out like Mark, he's such a great historian. It's not my thing, but it's great. So there are two things I have to address today. Nothing to do with today's date. But we're going to answer the question, what the bleep does a behavioral psychologist do today? But let's take it off with the date, Mark. (laughs) We always hear about- Thank you for that email. Hey, thank you. Okay, you didn't want me to mention your name, so I won't. I'm just going to say Jay. Thank you for that email. (laughs) We always hear about Friday the 13th, but today is is April 13th, and it's a Thursday, and there's been a lot of mystery and uh, superstition surrounding the number 13. Many people feel it's an unlucky day, and April 13th in, I believe it was 1973, was when Apollo 13, April 13th, Apollo 13's oxygen tank exploded, and that was the you know infamous Houston. We have a problem, and Apollo thirteen. Sad. Um, Sad. Yeah, but but NASA figured out how to get those guys back safely. So that was one very ominous event. Another one, a great tragedy in American history. April thirteenth of eighteen sixty five, Abraham Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. And so uh, that that has to be one of the worst, um, worst times in American history. But on the flip side of the coin, in I believe it was 1960, April 13th, Sidney Poitier was the first African, a man of African descent to win an Academy Award for Best Actor for the movie Lilies of the Field. And you know what, Dr. Pat, that movie 
Oh, and it was man. shot in black and white, but it still stands the test of time. I saw it again recently. Oh, it's amazing. It's it's yes, for any everyone who has not seen Lilies of the Field, it is just an amazing movie. Now, there's a couple other things about today. Um Mercury, the planet Mercury was the most visible it would, you know, it it ever is on the 11th, but still on the 13th. If you look in the sky, you will see uh, the planet Mercury. And the reason that it's so visible is because it's as far as it gets from the sun. Mercury is just a little bit bigger than our moon. And usually when you're trying to look at it, it you know, it's, it's, it's silhouetted by the sun, so you can't see it, but now it's removed from the sun. But when we were doing the production meeting for this show, Dr. Pat, we looked at what does the angel number 13 mean oh wow okay. and we got 13 13 and the characteristics of this uh angel number is charming charismatic and confidence so on one hand people think 13 is unlucky and some things like apollo 13 and abraham lincoln's demise occurred then but then there's been some really uh stellar <laughs> events involving Mercury and, of course, uh, a, a huge movie star, Sidney Poitier. Um, we're also joking that if 13 is unlucky, then 12 and 14 are guilty by association. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that the truth, though? Um, but, you know, it's but what's fascinating is that, you know, those points of interest, and, and let's really talk about them for a minute, because Sidney Poitier, I mean, wow, I mean, from the moment, you know, from the moment. Um, but I don't think I'll ever forget that explosion. Yeah, with Apollo 13. I don't I don't think I'll ever I won't forget what went on up there with those people. And, yeah. you know, I mean, we didn't have what we have now. So, yeah, okay, so here's the problem. So the problem, is, <laughs> this, is, this is not a problem. This is like the challenge of living in uh, this year, right? We're living this year, 2023, and, and having an incident that you remember. Okay, let's just be clear. So here we are, and we're having an incident we remember. But we know it now because we're looking at these people that went up and they had a little bit, okay, maybe it wasn't an explosion. I So I have my view because I watched the movie. <laughs> so we, so history has been tainted by Hollywood. Okay, so maybe they didn't. So what happened with them is something happened in, in, in their situation. And they they had to do something very interesting to make other things not happen. Did you watch the Tom Hanks Apollo 13? Did you watch that? Not only did I watch that, uh -oh, but my my go. my father was one of the guys who helped figure out how to get it back. And I was a kid and wow. I remember he came home from work and he said to my mom, he goes, "Jeannie, wow. Um, I got to eat and I got to go back to work because if we don't figure out something tonight, these guys are going to die. And I said, but dad, I said on the news, you know, because I was always Mr. You know, space. I said, dad, on the news, they said it was OK. He goes, Mark, that's blank, blank. Yeah. Um, he said, that's what they're telling people. We've got to figure this out yeah. now. And, and it was really amazing because the Tom Hanks movie did a great job. My dad watched it. I watched it with him, which was really cool. And he said, yeah, that, that's what happened because they, they knew, they meaning the engineers here on Earth, knew what they had to work with in the lunar module, which was attached to the command module. And there were hoses and things, a, thing, a lot of uh, things that weren't compatible but they were able to jerry rig things to to create the hoses and to work on the oxygen supply and then they had to alter the trajectory so they instead went around the moon and used the slingshot effect to send them back to earth and here's the thing and this was uh, um, represented in the movie too they didn't have calculators 
they were doing everything by slide rules. And I remember my dad always working with a slide rule. He tried to teach me how to do it. And all I can say is, and I was a little kid. And then when I was in high school, um, by that time, we all had calculators. And it was like, thank God for that. But um, what it shows you, Dr. Pat, is that although we become very dependent on technology, human ingenu ingenuity yeah. and the creative powers and the, the ability of the human brain to accept and solve problems is, is just amazing. So, so Apollo 13, that showed us that we can really accomplish anything because what could have and most likely should have been a disaster wasn't. Yeah. You know, look, I love, Mark, don't you love this? I mean, I grew up in an era where we were shocked by the, the, what came out of Vietnam. Yeah. And yet we demanded it. So much so that reporters and newscasters, very different than the world today, which I don't understand, so I don't quite understand this, so this is me not understanding again. So the only difference between back then and like all the reporters, I had a buddy, <clears throat> very young guy, must have been like 18 or something. You know, we were both young. Let's just be clear about that. But, you know, he got the draft and then went over. And he said, I'm going to, I. you can give me a gun or you can give me a camera. And they gave him a camera. <clears throat> Now, he said they gave him a camera because he was really lousy with the gun and nobody really wanted him next to anybody. But he went and what he did was extraordinary. And a lot of those pictures, and I, I'm, I'm not permitted to, to say his name, um, but a lot of those pictures you saw come back on the news. Now, the question that I raise, the behavioral part of me raises, is why... If my friend who could go over there and do that and we get pictures that come back and come back on API and come out Associated Press and they come out here, given the digital world we live in, why don't we get those now? So what's changed? What's changed is who owns the news and the media. That's why we're the new mainstream and media. See, it's who owned it then. Yeah. Like was like a lot of people and now all media is owned by, by two companies. And so the world we're living in and now is filtered information. And so, you know, the filtered information we get, we have to make our own assumptions because we don't have your dad. Like we don't have your yeah. story. But when you see the acting in that movie, it's a long movie, isn't it? You, you know get what, the though, emotional. Yeah, yeah. You sure do. yeah. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, what was it Kevin Bacon? So Kevin Bacon was in there. But yeah, you yeah. get, you get, I'm sitting there and I had a flashback to like when I was a kid and people didn't think I had what it took. Today's show is for everybody to take out and think about themselves. When you put that label of 13 on you and you are thinking, I'm unlucky 13, we got to help you with that. Now, I don't know what you do if you're born on April 13th, but actually, if you look up your horoscope, you're in pretty good shape. But this That's show tonight is really to think about all of us, what we do, how we do it, and what does it mean for us to be able to shift or change? Uh, let's take a short break. When we come back, we open phones, right? Tonight, 1-800-930-2819. Uh, when we come back, we've got people lining up for the show, 1-800-930-2819. Also, if you go to our Facebook page, Facebook Transformation Talk Radio, type your comments in there. Colton's going to bring all your comments up on there, and we'll get them up on the show. And when we come back, I may take a moment to tell you what a behavioral psychologist is and why that appealed to me, contrary to the opinion of all my friends. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, 
everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we are going to the phones here. But before we do, I want to take a moment. I did mention your book, Mark, but I think it's always good uh, for you to let people know one how to get it. Um, the reason I'm really excited about your book is that, look, you and I support a lot of authors and a lot of people. Yes. Give out your, your thing, and then I'm going to tell you with some feedback I'm getting with Dr. Sharon Martin here. But go ahead, and, and okay. people, people want to know how to get that book. The Afterlife Frequency. It's my latest book, and it was up for Pulitzer. It won the 2022 Cover Award, and it's up for two other awards, and I have it on good information. It's already won one of them, but I'm not allowed wow, to just no. close that yet. I and know. My website is the same as the title of my book, afterlifefrequency.com, and I invite all of you to go to my website and sign up for the newsletter and that way you'll keep you get updates on uh, mm -hmm. the doc, you know, the psychic and the doc and events that I'm doing. You can find out about scheduling a reading with me, events I have. Um, coming up in May, I've got two more light circle events. And if you go to my calendar of events on my website, uh, light circles are limited to six people each and everyone's guaranteed a reading. Also, you can subscribe through my website to Best Holistic Life Magazine, which I write for. And the editor-in-chief, Jana Short, good friend of the show. We've had her on a number of times. I look forward to having her back on. So you can find out about all of that at my website, afterlifefrequency.com. Now, Dr. Sharon Martin, who's been on the show, and she's going oh, yeah. to be on the show before her book launch. We've, we've changed it. Dr. Sharon Martin is doing for integrated, holistic, spiritual healing what mark is done let me just call it the afterlife and and the people that are reading her book and getting her book they're just totally blown away but it's not just a book neither is mark's mark's not just a book what mark wrote about was a lifetime of discovery exploration helping people and he happened to be brilliant at taking that and bridging the gap between science and the afterlife you see well i don't know that you say that but i just said it for you um that works <laughs> does that work okay that thank works you. yes that's it you put that right on the website <laughs> because the reason i love this is we're all being called to a different conversation sharon by far has bridged the gap between science and metaphysics in ways that i don't even understand it's one thing, Mark, and you know this, Rocky works with you. She knows what you put into a book. But it's one thing to know what you put into a book. It's another thing to see how people, how many people it's helping. See, that's what you do, Mark. I, I think it's great. I know you're being back out there again. I will not be here on May 18th, but I'll tell you why after we go to the phones. Colton, who do we have? All right, first up, we have Evelyn from Arizona. Hi, Evelyn. What part of Arizona? Are you like in the mountains or are you like hot? No, I'm in the hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't say it. But can I say it? Evelyn's hot. Okay. Evelyn, how can we help you? <laughs> how can we help you today? <laughs> um, well, I'm kind of looking to see if I should start a new direction in a different career. I have a feeling that where I'm at, it's it's not serving my purpose anymore. And if you see that this is a good time to do that, and if it will well, happen. Well, what Mark does, he's going to connect you with a loved one, perhaps. Okay. And we'll see what that loved one's going to say. And then I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> right. And, okay, and the thing cool. is, Thank you. Evelyn, a lot of times, <laughs> Evelyn, when people go into spirit communication, they go in with what they want to hear. And that's not always what a spirit, a spirit's not always going to tell you what you want to hear, but they're going to give you what you need to know. And it may not have anything to do with Good. your uh, career question. So um, let okay. me see. Uh, let me open up to frequency. I'm getting a male energy coming through. Now with this gentleman, he feels like he could be on a generation above you, possibly above that. So this could be somebody on the parent level, could be on the grandparent level. Let me work with him um a bit and all right the well, lungs are hurting real bad and i'm smelling lots of smoke it doesn't mean lung cancer it just means he may have been 
um, a heavy smoker at one point in his life. And prior to passing, wow, I'm getting this. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. So he was definitely having breathing I um, issues. Um, I, um, um, Evelyn, is anyone connected to, to you? Did anyone connect it to you? And it doesn't necessarily mean the spirit have cystic fibrosis. Uh, I don't know of anybody with cystic, cystic okay. fibrosis. I don't know anybody is, with that. Pardon yeah, me. It, Let's describe what it is, though, right? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, a, it's a debilitating uh, disease. Um, and I know it affects breathing and it affects your nervous system. And it takes you down a click at a time. And the thing is, many times um, when I feel how somebody died, different causes of death may have a similar physical sensation. In other words, if I talk about a draining sensation, which I'm getting with this gentleman, a draining sensation means an, an illness which took him down a click at a time. So it could be like cancer, it could be tuberculosis, could be pneumonia, that type of thing. But I'm getting a gentleman connected to you that his passing was not quick, difficulty with his lungs and breathing prior to passing. Although I do get that he was lucid and, and clear headed. He knew what was going on prior to passing, um, but he was being treated with pain medication, but it wasn't to the point where he was um, completely uh, um, disconnected intellectually. Does this make sense to you in any way? Well, my dad died of a massive heart attack, and that would be, I don't think that would, but he was a smoker. Now, my husband passed away from a kind of a freak accident where the vehicle rolled over him, and I think it fractured all his, like, all his ribs, and I think it, it punctured the lung. So, we may have one or both of them here. Um, July, 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 okay. They, these spirits are projecting to me. They're holding up a ruby. Rubies are the birthstone for the month of July. Now, let me go through this before you respond. This could indicate a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to you or either of them or someone close to you within the month of July. Could be something with a ruby in it, uh, a piece of jewelry of significance that you may recognize. And the cool things about, about July and rubies, July could be a variation on a name like Julie, but it could also be like a Ruby, Rudy, sometimes Robbie's or anything with any of that. Well, the July, the only thing with July, I know that was my mom and dad's anniversary in July. That, that would be the dad. only. That we got your dad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, and very, okay. very good, Evelyn. You get a gold star. Go sit at the front of the class because you made the connection right there. Um, your husband's over there too. And hold on. He said that. It is high time you climb the ladder and get the blank out of there. Interesting. <laughs> so he said that where you're at, employment-wise, you're in a rut. And he shows you climbing a ladder. I mean, not, you know, literally, but he says you're in a right. rut. It's high time you climb the ladder and get out of there. And the interesting thing, Evelyn, it doesn't necessarily mean go to another company uh, it, 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 the way I'm seeing this with the ladder and the vertical could indicate you may be in the position to be asking for, not demanding, but assertively asking for a promotion. And, and that's the message. And then I'm going to leave that with you and then turn you over to Dr. Pat. Does any of that make sense to you? Um. The latter part, uh, well, I mean, it, there's has been physicians open, and I've all I've kind of denied them just because I don't even think I want to work in this environment anymore. It's, I don't think it's for my highest good anymore. It's kind okay. of toxic. I find myself. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, when it comes to spirit uh, communication, when messages come through, your interpretation is more important than mine. Yeah. I'm seeing a metaphor, right. a vision of you climbing a ladder to get out of this pit. And I look at like a vertical transition as a promotion, but that could okay. mean get to another job to get you up and out of this gunk and funk. All right, Dr. Pat, okay. yeah. it's time for your cool. Thank insights. You. Yeah. So you already answered your own question, but I want to give you some help for a minute. 
Um, one of the things I used okay. to do is I used to help people with their careers. And the best oh. time to be looking for a new job is now while you have the one you have. And so if you haven't actively started to do that, I suggest you do it. Um, okay. And and the hardest thing that I coach people on now, because I am a behavioral psychologist 80% of the time, um, but this, <laughs> this, time, this time I'm a cognitive psychologist in the moment. Mm -hmm. So what I coach people on is changing your mindset about the current job you have. And the reason I do that, okay. I mean, honestly, when I coach people, I take a month just on this because you don't belong in a toxic environment. Nobody deserves a toxic environment, right? It's why I left my job right. after 25, 24 and a half years. But you have to do, it's the way you go about this now that is going to be more important than it itself. However, let me just say, if it gets too much for you, then you have to leave. But it sounds like you're at the place where it's kind of a toxic annoyance. Do you know what I mean? Right. You're like a little toxic right. annoyance. You know, it's like the frying pan that got burnt. And you still haven't taken it out of the house. Right. <laughs> you've got that thing on. The, you're like, what do you think you're going to do with that? Clorox it. Right. You don't want that fire and frying pan to turn on fire. So, so long as you're in a place where you can think logically and you're in a place where you can do this, start to look for something that will, will make you smile, okay? Right. Okay. Okay. Put your feelers out there. Do your networking, okay? You got that? In the hot sun. Go well, ahead and do that now. I, and I, I appreciate the message with, um, you know, whether from my husband and stuff, because if he's watching over and he's saying that, then I know he knows that I deserve better. So that's cool. And that, that, that is, I believe, the correct interpretation of that. And Dr. Pat, you just brought up a very, very important point. It's easier to get a job when you have a job. Because I know a lot of people, they get fed up with their job and they lose their uh, temper or, you know, they, in, 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 they, they without thinking, they quit. And then potential employers are like well why don't they have a job now why did they quit and then they'll call their current employment and say would that person be suitable for rehire and the answer is no so for all of you out there who hate your jobs or or want to change um, what dr pat said it's easier to get a job when you have a job rings so true yeah and also energetically I mean, you're in a place now where you have more choices than you can imagine. Um, and, okay. you know, you just have to own it. Don't wait for me or your husband or anybody to tell you you're worth it. You're worth it. Right. You're worth it. And and when you start to own that place and your space in that, everything will fall into place. Mm -hmm. But I want you to shift right now on this job. Sh try to get to a place of gratitude. OK, I know it's not not easy. But I'll, maybe if we have time, I'll kind of do a little exercise later, okay? Okay, cool. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thanks I appreciate all, everything. Thank yeah. you. Have a good time. Yeah, yeah thank you. She, Bye. She's going to get that job. She's going to get that job. I know. Oh, yeah. It. I know. It. All right, that's done. That's like done. Colton, who do we have? All right. I'm bringing on Allison from Napa. Hi, Allison. Ooh. Welcome to the show. How can we help you today? Hi. Um, so I work in a storage facility and a gentleman's ashes were left behind. They've been sitting in the office for about a year. I got a hold of his family, but for whatever reason, they did not want him back. I was going to do something nice, maybe put them in the river, but I just thought I'd see if he had any thoughts. Wow, that's pretty intense. Uh, that, I'll tell you, you you have our attention. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, there's a male in there. Do you know anything about this guy? So if I start giving you a description, would you be able to confirm it? So all I know is his name and where he lived. Okay. okay. 
um, because what I'm getting uh, from a male spirit connected to you is, and obviously, you know, what you said, the family doesn't want him back. They're about as dysfunctional as it gets. And that's what I'm getting from him. And he said, don't you uh -huh. listen to them. You send them, you send my ashes back to them because he feels it is really? unfair. He says it is an unfair burden on you to um, to dispose of them. He also said, don't trust my family because they very well may turn around and say, how dare you get rid of his ashes? We're going to sue. So yeah. he said, oh. do not oh, take wow. this decision oh, yeah. upon yourself. You get, you know, the mail, UPS, FedEx, whatever. One way you send it back to them. He said, this is not your decision. He's not angry at you. And he's actually quite um, pleased that you care enough to do this. But he said, do not trust my family. And and I don't say things like that uh, lightly. But before I turn it over to Dr. Pat, I'm tasting a lot of honey. Now, this is not necessarily about him. But when I say honey, Allison, what immediately comes to mind? What does honey, the substance, signify for you? Bees. Right, right. But what does Sweetness? it mean to you? Do you have a particular fondness? Do you like honey, dislike honey? I am tasting honey, honey, honey. Is there something significant about bees, beehives, huh. or honey going on with you? I was told that I was a beekeeper in my past life and I was killed by my bees. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't hear that every day. So I'll go with a yes on that one. So that's uh, what I call verifiable fact yeah. following a message. Not so much that you were killed by bees in your prior life, but that bees do have a significance. Because here's the thing. I don't fling out something like honey hoping to get a hit. And of all the calls Dr. Pat and I have done, Dr. Pat, have you ever heard anyone say something like that? I got to tell you this whole call, <laughs> like the whole thing. <laughs> this, this is one of these things that I, I'm, I'm going to have to go back. But no, I mean, when something like that happens, I mean, I had something similar happen to me about fire. But I wonder what the connection is about that, Mark. About the fire? About the bee. About the well, honey. Interesting. About right? the bee and the honey. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you for what you said, Mark, because I was going to jump in and say the same thing. Wow. Um, when you're dealing. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, and you're a lawyer, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. First of all. <clears throat> in law. In something like that. In my experience, you you get a notarized like dinghy letter. Anything like that, you get it. it. Because Mark is right. You may be hearing from one person in the family, but not the rest of them. So get the address. Uh, does, did he live local? Did the person live local locally? Um, Maybe like a couple hours from where I mm, am. But yeah, it, it was I, spot on what I, you said about the, the families. Um, so I, I cyber stalked, found the family. They screamed at me on the phone. They said, it's not them. Then I called the crematorium and they gave me the exact same phone number. So it was them. And then yeah. they just said, you know, leave us alone. Yeah, I, I'm probably wiping my fingerprints off that, taking a two hour drive and dropping it off. <laughs> okay. More, I, mean, I can do that. I, I'd, I'd, I mean, send it, I'd send it by okay. UPS and not have but anything. But let me to ask deal. another question. <laughs> Why is it being moved from where it is now? That's really the question I had. Why is it being moved from where it so is it now? So it, it was basically left in a storage unit. I don't know who's or when. And then yes. I, it's been sitting in the back office for a year. And I've been thinking about doing something nice with it. But if Oh, you guys okay. say no, then I, I won't. <laughs> I, I'm going to help you. Um, let me help you. Do you own the storage unit? Um, it's actually you, my father's the, business. Okay, so your father has to do something about it, right? So, you know, have your father okay. decide and have your father consult um, uh, his attorney for the business. Okay? okay, see what I'm saying? All you got to do is have your dad pick up the phone, call the attorney and say, hi, attorney. Uh, this is my situation. What what should I legally do? And by the way, if I can't do it, you do it. That's all. 
Yeah, okay, and, and I, I agree with Dr. Patton. I definitely agree with the spirit. Um, mm -hmm. You taking it upon yourself to dispose of the remains of somebody you're not related to when they have a family here, you are saying, sue me. And you're not just an employee, okay. that's your father's <laughs> business. And so they could bring yeah. some tremendous punitive lawsuit against yeah. you. So, okay, yeah. I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. I'm glad you called in. Yeah. I'm really glad you All called right, in. Thank, thank you. Thank I'm you. glad I did too. Yeah, man. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's take a really short break, Mark, if we could. And when we come back, I'll we just kick it back to Colton then. Okay. Colton, take us away. Psychic in the Doc. I'm Mark Anthony, the psychic, and I'm with my esteemed co-host, Dr. Pat Basili. And earlier, Dr. Pat, you said that you were going to tell us what is a behavioral psychologist. So yes. Yes. tell us. Thank you. Um, so those of you, uh, the the request I got was from one of our listeners, actually one of my longtime listeners, who has heard me talk about my research area and actually looked it up and saw the diagrams and stuff. She said, you should tell everybody what that is. So here it is. Let me just give you the formal definition. And it is a booming field. Uh, behavioral psychologists, booming. And I'll tell you why. They focus on the study and the analysis and the treatment of psychological conditions that have to do from a behavioral perspective. So what are we talking about? Overeating, drinking, okay. Uh, this is a school of thought that all behaviors are problematic. They, they talk about this, all of them, mental health conditions that can be changed through, and I, I don't agree with this, but can be changed by adjusting the stimuli. So that is, you put a piece of food in, my, in front of me and you dangle it in front of me and I salivate, but I don't have to grab it and eat that candy. See, that's what that's what the thing is. I'm a little bit different because I also integrate a couple of other things in my approach. And you would see that in my research. Um, I do believe in behavioral psychology and I believe in cause and effect. And cause and effect is something that comes from a very spiritual perspective. So if you think about cause and effect, think about Ernest Holmes, think about what Mark said, new thought. You know, the idea of cause and effect is embedded in more than psychology. But psychology had to put it this way because the schools say, oh, you're going to be, you're going to get a PhD or master's or something in psychology. What do you want to focus on? And people will say clinical. I tried it. I did not want to do clinical in my state because I couldn't say the word psychology or astrology. And by the way, Mark, if I had a clinical, if I went on to get a clinical and did clinical psychology here, and I started to talk like this on a show, probably could lose my license. So there are decisions you make. So anybody out there, just look it up and, and look at it. It is one of the boomingest, boomingest fields is what they call behavioral psychology. And there are schools now um that will pull them out there are schools i think eastern uh, oregon has one southern new hampshire Univ university of phoenix so it's booming why behavior because we're really struggling with it we're yeah. struggling with addiction rates and we're struggling with other things so thank you for that question when we have more time maybe we'll do a little demonstration but let's go to the phones if we could thank you mark all right so yeah we got renee from seattle coming in hey renee hi Hey, how can I'm we wondering, help you today? Well, I'm wondering if I can get a message from the other side. All right, Renee, let's see who we got. Um, one, two, three, four. Wow. We got four folks lining up. Let's see which one wants to step forward. Female energy coming through. What I'm getting with her, um, she could she could be on your generational level, but I tend to feel she's on the one above it. And what I'm getting with her, and by above it, this could be like the parent, aunt, um, maybe an older friend. Um, and what I'm getting with her is, wow, all my endocrine glands, um, liver, pancreas, kidneys, 
um, her cervix, that area, uh, the reproductive areas, uh, intestines. Oh, this poor woman really suffered with a lot of issues with her internal organs. And I'm getting, oh, I just heard the word metastasize. So this was some type of cancer that metastasized throughout her body. And let me tell you, she put up a heroic, a heroic resistance to this. And it seemed like she kind of fought it to a stalemate for quite some time, but then uh, the cancer just exploded. It just went like wildfire throughout her system. And um, mm. she was doing her very best to maintain lucidity and mental clarity, but it feels like in the end stages, it got into her brain, which was affecting her, her cognitive abilities. Um, does any of this make sense to you? I think it might have been an ant. Yeah. An ant. Okay. Remember, I was saying uh -huh. we on the mom, the ant level. All right. Hold on. Yeah. Is there a, a D name like a DD or Deborah or Deidre? And it may not be her name. Um, it could be somebody else connected to you or her. Go ahead. Well, there was the ant that I was thinking of was a Delma. Del, if I said Deidre and her name is Delma, boom, That's we good. got it. All right. So you got your aunt yeah. Delma coming through and she's. I'll tell you what a nice lady. Um, all of a sudden, I feel like roses, daisies, sunflowers. And she said, when you're smiling, when you're smiling. And I know that sounds oh. goofy. Oh, but I she's, love it. I, yeah. yeah, I feel like I just stepped into a Doris Day movie. You know, she's just like all <laughs> sunshiny and nice and happy. And she said that um, your gift is that you bring that sunshine to a lot of people because you actually... She said, you don't realize what a positive attitude you really do have and how that influences everybody around you. What's with you and red meat? Are you avoiding it or do you eat a lot of it? Because red meat, I'm seeing uh, no, I, I haven't around. had red meat in 30, 40 years. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Woo All right. Yep. <laughs> that is what I call verifiable fact following the message. When a spirit gives us a message of an explanatory or advisory nature and your aunt... Um, came through and she talked about you having this very positive disposition and you're very inspirational. You don't even realize how much that you are and what a positive influence you're making. But then when the spirit immediately follows that up with an objectively verifiable fact, red meat, you don't eat red meat, haven't done so in decades. The verifiable fact of red meat is how the spirit is letting you and I know that we've properly received and interpreted the message. And by the way, it's time you get the oil changed in your car. What's going on with that? It's interesting. I, I just had it repaired in February. There was an oil leak. And there we so, go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but that, but does that mean that it's fixed, Mark? Not necessarily. There may be something else going on. Let's keep an eye on that. And uh, if okay. you have a garage or you park your car in the same place, um, back it up a bit and see if there's an oil spot underneath uh, the hood area, because okay. I'm, I'm getting this oil thing. So even though you had the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the problem supposedly fixed. There's something else going on here. Okay. All right. Um, hold on. E one, one more thing. She said literature, literature. Now, of course, literature, you know, we all had to take British lit, English lit, American lit in, in uh, school, but there's more to it than this. And she shows you doing tremendous amounts of research writing things, taking notes. Are you working on a book or a thesis? Uh, no, I, I I do read a lot and I, I do research a little bit, but I, I'm not working on a book. Okay, because yeah, the, the, they, meaning your, your aunt and other spirits, are talking uh -huh. about you doing a lot of research, a lot of literature, but they keep talking about you writing. So even though you may not currently be working on a book, or some paper, it okay. looks like that is not out of the question. Okay. Sounds good. Ham All right, last thing, I'll turn it over to Dr. Pat. Hamlet. Okay, okay. Hamlet. That shakes through any all right, but Hamlet's also like a place too. Um, Hamlet. Does Hamlet make sense to you in any way? Hamlet. Shakespeare. No, but I'll think about that. 
And okay. look, oh, just out of curiosity, sometimes when I get Shakespeare plays, that could mean somebody uh -huh. of significance connected to you with the first name William. You know, yeah. William Shakespeare. So. Oh, my dad. My your dad. dad's <laughs> William? Yes. Did you say your dad was William? Uh huh. Okay, Mark. Is he planet Earth or the other side? He died he's four on the years other ago. Side. Oh, he's on the other side. Yep. So I'm getting William. That's your dad. Okay, hold on. Interesting. He comes in Hamlet. Okay. Um, <laughs> hold on. He, he okay. said that you are very humble, but the problem is you undervalue yourself. And it is time that you start realizing you have self-worth. And he said, there are people around you who would say, well, that's arrogance. He said, no, they have low self-esteem and they confuse self-confidence with arrogance. And he said, my daughter is not arrogant, but it is time that you embrace your self-confidence. And that's what he wants you to know. And he said, George says hi. George says hi. George that was my grandfather. Says, and there's my grandfather, your verified... Yeah. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There's your verifiable fact following wow. the message. So Grandpa George says hello. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. So what are you going to do with this information? What about what Mark said resonates with well, you gonna, seriously? Yeah, I think it'll affect my. I think it'll affect my interactions with people starting tomorrow. Okay. Good. You know. Good. Yeah. But a lot no. of times, I think. I think I squelched my conversation because of that very reason. So wow, wow. So that's good. Yeah. So it's very developing positive. a powerful voice, right? Yes. Okay. Good. I love it. Great. Thank you. Wow. Hey, Mark, thanks a lot. Thank you so very much. Um, thank you. Bye bye. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank God bless. Yeah. Um, I have a few minutes. I want to tell everybody about something that's getting ready to happen. Sure. And what's getting ready to happen is, and, and this has been for me, most of us have had to put things on hold for a number of years. Um, one of the things that Jessica and I clearly knew we wanted to do, especially when we were in the video of the John Legend um, music video, uh, we came back from that and we were affected by it greatly. And then of course, right on the heels of that, here we are, right? Right. But it didn't, tell it didn't stop us from what we wanted to do for me i've always wanted to really ignite women all over the world now that's a broad statement but three years passed i never lost sight of it on may 18th and more information will come one of our incredible hosts jim fannin he is taking his dream to the world. A promise made on his mother's deathbed to take his proprietary system that he uses for the premier people of the world he's bringing to all of us. And the first thing out of the gate he is doing is he is having an event, Women in the Zone in Chicago on May 18th. Now, I couldn't have planned this any better. I couldn't have planned this in conjunction with the launch of our women's channel. There's just some things that Spirit does. I'm gonna be the MC and I'm one of the speakers and Grossman will be the other. We invite you, if you live in the Chicago every year, we'll give you more, but this will also be live streamed because that's the way Jim works. And I have to talk about it, Mark, because I don't want people to lose hope. I don't want the people that called in not to think about getting the show they want. Even when it looks like things may not be moving, the universe is orchestrating your optimism and positive energy and your hopefulness and gives Mark the opportunity to write a best-selling book, an award-winning book, and here he is, and here we are doing the psychic and the doc. This event, for me, I thought I had to put it on. And God, the universe, says, girlfriend, you have worked hard enough. Let Jim do it. 
lots more to come on that. Mark, what do you think? Is that, <laughs> is I, that I, fascinating? I, I, yes, that is synchronicity at its finest. Yeah. And it's really great. I'm I'm so, so proud of you. And I'm I'm honored to do this show with you. Oh. I know, well, I know how how hard you work um yeah. with women and women's issues. And this is the perfect, perfect forum, perfect venue for you. And we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. Yeah. And it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be total fun. No, nothing is more rewarding than helping people. And then, you know, it's nice to get the positive feedback, but that's, you know, that's one of the reasons we do this show. I, as I always say, uh, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, the psychic and the doc are on call because we are the place people turn to when they don't know where else yeah. to turn. Yeah. And, and just so you know, we're just warming up. Thank you all. Thank you, Rocky. Thank you, Linda. Thank you to my esteemed friend and colleague. Thank you to all of you out there. Uh, this is the psychic and the doc, and we make promises to you and we are going to keep them. Thank you all for tuning us in and turning us on. We'll see you. And Colton, thank you. And whoever else is answering that phone, thank goodness for your fingers doing the walking for you. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the psychic and the doc with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat but silly right here on transformationtalkradio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife. Extraordinary problems? Yeah, they do. They require extraordinary solutions. But step into the world of possibilities with us on The Psychic and the Doc. That's every Thursday. 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. And don't forget, we're also live face-to-face -face on Facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio. <laughs>